love you all. It's gonna be great. Love you all. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 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 Are we here? Okay. Hello. Hi. <laughs> My name is Omega Jones. I am also known as the Critical Bard. Uh, I am a actor, vocalist, professional um, content creator within the community. And we are here to bring to you the hashtag Black AF side table. Um, just a little joke pun about our, our original round table. Uh, but we're excited to be here to bring to you the honest and real truth about how Black folk in the top and gaming community and D community um, have been treated and the, the experiences that we have. So um, I'm going to open it up to my cast and my crew uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, and we can start with Tanya. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Tanya DePass, also known as Cypher of Tear. Uh, you have seen me on Rivals of Waterdeep as Lisa Storio, the very grumpy and often in need of a bath. Uh, human paladin and um, got a chance to play some vampire with with Dave and uh, looking forward to hanging out and having some real talk with y'all. Uh, but Dave, hey Dave. he's to the right of me. <laughs> oh, you are muted. That helps because I was saying we got a bit of a delay, so I'm sorry if I missed my mark, but also I made me miss my mark. Um, Walter, uh, this weekend, I'm participating as Trovis, the Dragonborn, as a part of the reality RP, so I'm going to tell you in advance, I apologize if you see me typing on my phone, it's because I'm playing the game, not because I'm not paying attention. Uh, we're doing that all as a part of D&D &D Live. Uh, I am mm -hmm. the writer and co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons of Dark and Wish, the dungeon master of the stream Dungeons & Dragons of Dark and Wish, which Season 2, Episode 1, returns next Thursday, the 25th at 5 Pacific. Uh, I also play freely on Silver and & Steel, and you can find me spitting the truth all over the internet at B. Dave Walters, wherever fine content can be found. Also, let me just say up front, Black Lives Matter. Mm. Uh, TK, TK Johnson. I'm glad you called on me now and not when my computer was exploding. It's me, it's TK. Uh, my computer exploded for a hot second and came back as soon as V-Dave was like, Black Lives Matter. And I was like, oh, it saved me. Happy blue, happy, happy Juneteenth. It's a Juneteenth miracle. Um, all right, spooky stories. I put them on the internet. I am a dungeon master for uh, Tales from the Myth and Mythic Odysseys of Theros by Roll20. Um, that's it. I'm writer, narrative designer, uh, editor. That's it. Yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> Abria. Quitty. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, I'm Abria Iyengar. Uh, you can catch me running Pirates of Salt, Salt Bay over on Saving Throw Show, which is a D&D 5th edition actual play. Uh, I also am a player on uh, Roll20 and D&D's Lost Minds of Fandelver campaign, and I'm a writer and actor and uh, streamer all over the place. <laughs> Look, it, it's good to be busy in this in this time. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Ember Moon. I'm I'm so sorry. I'm I'm freezing everywhere, but I'm gonna do it because you know we like to slap chess in the Moon household. Uh, but you guys know me as Ember Moon. I am from WWE, is in World Wrestling Entertainment, and they've been so amazing and so awesome to let me come here and talk real talk with you guys. Um, I just now kind of branched out into the D and D world as of last year. You can find me on the Dave's one on one shots. Uh, I play every other Wednesday with Warful Board and a whole bunch of other other stuff, but mostly Rollout, which is the WWE D&D show that we have. Awesome. Um, this is our group. We are very excited about it, and we're going to uh, get started with, you know, so obviously a lot of stuff has happened within the last month, not even including coronavirus. Um, a lot of heinous acts have happened against black folk in the community, not in the community, all over the world, uh, all over America. Um, but because of what has happened, 
there's been a spotlight upon a lot of black folk um, in the community. Um, so I wanted to see how you all have handled that, what has happened for you, um, like has your presence been boosted? Um, just what what has life been like for you for this past little bit of time? Uh, I think if I can jump in, uh, I absolutely appreciate that, yeah, uh, the signal boosting from the community as everyone sort of rallies around and hears us for not just the things that we're saying about current events and with like police brutality and all of the protesting, but that uh, our community specifically has tried to like take that and use it to elevate voices. And it's been really, really nice because being reached out to by a lot of different people and a lot of different organizations that want to center uh, our voices and my voice and like, increase the diversity within their own ranks is really awesome. But I will say that me, like for me personally, I'm also dealing with the bandwidth problem of like all of the things that are happening weigh heavily on me and they're not something that I can opt in and opt out of the way a lot of allies can, where allyship fatigue is a, is a thing that we're talking about right now. And I, I know it's hard and I respect it, but it's, I, all I want to say as my early call to action is that everyone that's reaching out, please keep doing so and don't stop and don't let it stop now that things are like not trending as much anymore about it. Like I want to work with as many people as want to work with me, but I need time. And it's not just because my schedule is booked and blessed right now. It's because I'm working with a tenth of the normal bandwidth I normally have. For sure, um, and ally fatigue is a is a thing I've been seeing a lot of, and we don't need that. <laughs> um, but um, anyone else, how's life been for you? Um, for me, no, um, please, um, you. Oh, well, you go, you go. <laughs> it's fine. all of us. Um, so we got that weird freeze thing. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna go. Um, you know, for me, it's just been overwhelming with how many emotions that I've felt and like it, you get mad you get angry you get sad and then you're happy one second like it's been just overwhelming with dealing with those emotions um and talking them out I think is the best part um I am so happy to have such a diverse job to where we could band together as a race and not just as a race as women you know and yeah. talk about these issues and have that camaraderie to lean on, which is so important when you're confused about your feelings or you might have a different opinion from someone else. But like us being able to talk as adults, as strong black women and men in this situation, like I think that that's so important because you're right. These things haven't ended. The protests are still going on around the world. It's just I don't know what it is, if it's a ratings issue, because other things are more prevalent right now and life has to move on. But like, it upsets me that this still isn't front page news. This isn't front page news mm -hmm. when you go onto Twitter, on Instagram, and it yes. should be because these things are not changing right now. Like, yeah, they're being brought to the attention of everyone else, but we want to see change. Just, just because one thing happens doesn't mean that it's changed. You know, and I do want to express that because it makes me very upset that like you have so many other African Americans that are victims of this situation that we're talking about. And what about them? That's mm -hmm. what I want to hear. What about them? What about the Breonna Taylors, the Trayvon Martins, and everyone yes. else has been wronged in this situation? Why are we not talking about them? Why are we not shouting their names to the rooftop? Just because one person, and no offense to that family, because I am so happy that one of us has gotten justice, but there are more. There are yep. so many more. And this needs and there to are so many more. There's so many more that don't get the coverage. I don't exactly. know the actual statistic, but I feel like for every one that's covered, there has to be at least 15 more that's out there just waiting for their justice, and it's never going to come just because someone didn't have a camera on them. And that exactly. is hard. Yep. That is yeah, very that was, hard. That's one of the one of the first things I said was imagine how many George Floyds haven't been recorded, you know? And uh, mm. Robert <sighs> Fuller commits suicide mm. hanging from a tree in front of City Hall. No. Which, for the record, y'all, black folks mm. don't do that. Then, Thank like, you. two days later, his stepbrother gets killed. 
Yeah, yeah. And then his brother gets killed by his step or step brother, half brother, whatever. I don't, I don't mean to mis misrepresent the details. Gets killed by the police a couple of days later. I, I, yep. I think what the number one thing that I, I would ask um, to uh, echo what everyone else is saying here, which I literally hear an echo of what everyone else is saying here, um, is <laughs> it's, I know that it is tiring, especially when you're new to these conversations, um, but mm -hmm. understand that this is our existence every single day. Yeah. I mean, you see us and we show up and we play games and we have a good time and we smile and we, because we're just used to it. It's just the weight we carry. Um, yep. And now that it's been a couple of weeks and you realize how tired you might be or hear some people from just seeing it and hearing about it. I mean, again, imagine literally being steeped in it your entire life. Uh, and I would say more than anything, if you gotta, and I've said this before, if you need to take a break, if you're here for D&D &D Live, playing games, watch TV, watch Netflix, it's fine. Have fun, enjoy your life. Just don't take your eye off the ball, especially in November. Because the real battle yes. is in November. So register and vote and just don't be rocked to sleep because just because people stop talking about these things does not mean it's fixed. Period. Yep. Yeah. And, and for a few guys, period. with the Robert oh, Fuller situation is that there are multiple African-American men and women that have been found within the past two weeks uh, hanging from a tree. Thank you. And all of them have ru been ruled yep. in some form or fashion, no foul play, which is BS. Yep. All right. So and I'm trying to keep my language corporate, y'all, because I have the word yeah. now of us all. I swear to you. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> Let, let when, just and one of them is like, like no, no public interest. So they just ruled it a yeah. suicide. And it's like. Real, real quick, I don't, don't want to grab second. the mic again, but I realized okay. there might be someone in chat thinking this. Like, how do we know? Here's the thing. If I were, say, I don't know, head of the Valencia, California Police Department, and I had a guy who had committed suicide right now, I'd be like, y'all, I know what this looks like. Here's the crime scene photos. Here's the autopsy. Yes. Here's the CC footage of him going to the tree. Here's him tying himself. Here's his search history with how to tie a noose over the last two weeks. Yes. I would give a preponderance of evidence to be like, I know how this looks. The fact that mm -hmm. they're just like, mm, hung himself, no autopsy required. No, it's fine. It's like, yeah. No, that's, it's like, nah. that's a mess. Really quick. Tanya, you had something to say? You know what it is. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say is that, you know, over the last few weeks and, you know, it's and I'm going to be that person and I expect a text later when we get people. No, when we get people who are always like, I'm so tired of hearing about it. I'm angry and and this isn't fair or they act like racism is brand new. And they just want to act like, oh, well, you know, have you never read a history book? Have you talked to no black people? Oh, I'm sorry. You probably don't actually know any black people beside the 10 you follow online and you think you know about black issues. Because I'm going to be that person. Because I've had so many people go, oh, this isn't so bad. You need to wait. And you're upset. And mm. or, or don't be upset. <laughs> Just wait it out. Oh, look, look. Off when we're not on camera. Why are you mad? Why aren't you taking the moment to educate me? Oh, oh my it's God! Just, you if you just softened your tone women, right? and spoke to me, oh, no, have you? no, no, no. I, have you, I don't understand. This is a learning I experience. Said, I've said specifically, mm -hmm. I don't care. I do not care at this moment. And we said it in the last two roundtables, and I'm going to say it here. We are not your Wikipedia. We are not yeah. your Webster's Dictionary. We're not anything that anything like that. We're human beings. So if you want that information from us. F you, pay me. <laughs> because I don't have the emotional effort or time or patience anymore. I live this every day. And if you can't go online, www.google.com or Hotmail or whatever you use to be your search engine, if you can't do it yourself and you're expecting it from us, the ones who have dealt with this since we were born, no, you're going to pay me. Period. And I get That's it. Right. Like, to touch on your point yeah. is that... I am. I live in Texas. Okay. I, I, you know, I'm. I love Texas, but like, there is that fear because Texas is that southern state, and there are people in the state that you are afraid of. There is. 
I remember when I was 16 years old, uh, I was going to Circuit City to get a CD of whatever came out and I got pulled over and I have never been so scared in my life because my mom was like, if it happens, you take the key out of the ignition, you pop it on the dash where he can see it and you leave your hands up so he knows you're not grabbing anything. That's something that's instilled in us at a very young age that that fear is real because it was real for my mom. It was real for her grandmother and it has been real for me. I can't tell you how many times that I have been in a Southern state in the wrong town at the wrong time of day. And I've heard that, Hey, what are you doing around here? Right? I've, I've lived it. So you can't sit here and tell me to calm down. You can't sit here and say, hey, I'm tired because I still have to live with that fear. I still have to go to a grocery store. And if someone gives me a dirty look, I have to smile and pretend like it didn't happen because if I have any other reaction, it can turn into something else. I don't think people yep. understand what we deal with on a daily basis. And when I have to smile through it, that's when you're like, oh, well, she's happy all the time. Uh, that's not fair. That's not fair for anyone. We are not a bug for you to be grossed out at. We are not a bug for you to step on. We are people. Yep. We are humans with real feelings. And the last time I checked is when I get a cut on my finger, I bleed the same blood as you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I'm sorry, you just having spoken. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, going along no. with that, no. let's, yeah. Let's talk about the acceptability politics of being black in this space. Like, yes, we deal with this every day, walking out in the world. And uh, B. Dave and I were in a conversation earlier where we talked about like, B. Dave is tall. I'm extremely tall. I grew up in Orange County where I was not, I was one of the few black people wherever I was and physically intimidating walking down the street. And part of that carries over into our nerd community too, a group that has a strange self-definition of being victimized over time because of our hobbies and the things that we like. Imagine like the compounding, doubly so, of being black and nerdy, of being a geek about things that stereotypes would say we aren't interested in because we're supposed to be into like rap and sports and we can be into a, a wealth of things. Everyone contains universes, but uh, I, I want to point out that like, the things that we're dealing with right now also carry into the community that we're a part of, that you here now are of. So I wanna ask that you like inspect the way in which you interact with geeks of color in your community, because one, we are raw right now. Nerves are frayed and exhaustion is real. And not just asking for empathy, but also examine yourself and see the ways in which you might be microaggressing and adding to the burden of being black people in this space right now because it's it's rough huh. yeah i want to i want to quickly bring it in uh because obviously we can talk all day about what's <laughs> happening in our community i mean uh, happening outside in the world as black people but let's bring it into the community how what i don't want to say what can we do but what are some things that non-black people um, can attempt to do or just be wary of as we continue on living our Black AF lives, because that's never <laughs> going to stop, ever. Yeah. Uh, I would say don't try and explain to us how we should be. You know, Ooh, like, um. I posted something yesterday Ooh. that was, uh, was some audio recordings from the early 20th yes. century where they interviewed actual slaves actual slaves that were talking yep. about what mm. slavery was like which was mind-blowing to me yep. that it's they lived <laughs> yep. long enough to be recorded and somebody was like well but you have to be careful with those accounts because if they were interviewed by white people they changed the story i was like first of all have all the seats are you trying to explain <laughs> to <laughs> me it would, what, uh, what it must be like for her, you know, black people that grew up in bondage to relate to white people, you know? it's it, So understand that, yes, it is a conversation. It is a conversation, but 
you have to understand where we're coming from. Don't be like someone said earlier, be like TK said, have you just tried maybe doing it like this or saying it like yes. this or maybe just maybe try oh, yeah. saying, you know, all lives are equally important. Like, no, we're not here to comfort you. It's like that, uh, that white blessing thing. Let's call it white blessings. No. Oh my God. No, we weren't supposed <laughs> to be uncomfortable because yes. our lives are uncomfortable comfortable and it is only yes. when we have that basic understanding of Blessings. the shared experience and yet the different experiences that all of us have had just like what ember was just talking about uh that we can even have the foundation of how we're going to build towards something better yeah. i don't know i think i lost all y'all <laughs> <laughs> no 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 um TK, you want to add to that? Because I know that from the last one that we had on D&D Beyond, uh, I, I know you can go off. So any words? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just, like, I saw red for a minute with the white blessings because it completely erases the responsibility of this entire country being built on a foundation of black blood. Um, yeah. Literally. And blood and, and so it's, <laughs> like, it's like, oh, uh, it's a blessing. A blessing from from who from yep white patriarchy sky daddy who's that from who's it <laughs> who is it like i want to know where you go. like what church do you go to like i, I want to know i want to know because that's from my god white patriarchy sky daddy yeah it's like oh, yeah, I'm, my, I'm right my my module. like what's, what are you talking about <laughs> but whatever you know white blessings get out of here <laughs> just mad just mad now <laughs> I, uh, it's um, like for me go ahead yes <laughs> um for me it's it's the people and and omega's gonna laugh because i was mad about this yesterday morning and today it's the people <laughs> on twitter specifically the white non-black folks when you talk about a thing or you go hey if i'm talking about black lives matter if i'm talking about juneteenth and some rando decides but but you're not mad about this thing. Why aren't you mad about this other thing? And they want to be mm -hmm. all in your mentions or they see someone else replying to you and then they want to come in. Now your mentions are a disaster and a trash heap because now <laughs> they want to argue with rando number 558 and whatever thousand dollars. You're oh sitting there minding your business me. trying to untag me, everything else. Um, or the people that go, well, you know, I had someone literally say, well, you know, if you don't educate people, you're not helping the cause. And I was like, Ugh. if you do not take a little raggedy self and find a chair and glue <laughs> yourself into it and read a book. And normally I try not to do that to people because Dave knows this. We're all aware of a lot of us have a platform. A lot of us can't mm -hmm. be the angry black person, at least on Twitter, on, on social, yeah. whatever. That mm -hmm. hasn't stopped me yet. But <laughs> I, I had time for old girl that morning because she didn't look like she was old enough to know what the cause was, let alone yeah. to tell a 40 some year old black woman that I should be nice and hold people's hands. Reminder, <laughs> Google is free. Google's gonna be free unless <laughs> Jeff Bezos decides to take that too. But mm. it's still free. But when you reply to me and go, That's well, true. what does Juneteenth mean? What does this mean? Oh my the God. Same energy, hold on, the same energy I, you used. To put that in reply to me, you could have gone to a search engine and got that answer. Yep. Because nine times out of ten, I it's, just it's on Google research. today, y'all. Yeah. Just yeah. click oh, the Google. It'll it'll tell you. No, you <laughs> have to type it in today. <laughs> just just it's click trending, Google. Like, what's it the problem? I can't yep. tell you how we are many not your encyclopedia, you Black Tanica. You all know. Sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying, TK? Sorry. Sorry, I'm going off. I'm mad. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, right. say it, TK. Talk. My computer's, Speak your my computer's real glitchy. My, my computer's real glitchy, so I can't tell what I'm saying and what I'm not. Uh, what was the last thing you heard? <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I was just saying that I can't. I can't tell you how many times today I have gotten, what's Juneteenth? I've gotten, what is Black Lives Matter? And I'm like, oh, if I have to explain three letters to you at this point, something's wrong. Something's more than wrong. 
And I can't tell if you're being genuinely ignorant, if you just don't know, if you're that sheltered, like this is fallout and you came out of that bunker, or if you just don't care. And I'm at the point of not caring about either sides. Because again, that's that emotional effort thing that I have to put in just to tell you things that you should just be able to find out. Um, yeah. And, 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 and I'm more than over it. I'm more than over it. I'm being honest. Um, but let's let, let's get in that for just a second. Because I want to talk about something that was just posted literally a couple of days ago, which is the diversity and Dungeons and Dragons statement that Wizards and D&D has released. Um, talking about their initiatives, about going forward with um, changing how some things within the D&D game are handled, some of the race problems, how they're going to pursue um, their own diversity issues within the company. Uh, and I'm sure we all have some genuine thoughts about it because let's be real, this isn't coming for Wizards, this isn't coming for anyone, but there's been an influx of branding that has said Black Lives Matter or we care about blank. And we've seen throughout history that a lot of folks like to jump on a bandwagon and not actually follow through with the words. So I'm very curious to know how you all think, what do you all believe Wizards can do? Um, what are your thoughts on it? And before anyone says anything, I'm gonna say this right now. Yes, drow and orcs are racist. We're gonna say that flat out, point blank period, periodic table, it's done. The racist. I'm happy that they're finally starting to realize that. Um, so now, if anyone wants to jump in, how do you feel? Yeah, I, let me say something. Well, first of all, for the audience, just I want you all to, it's really hard for us to hear each other. I think you guys, you guys yeah. can all hear us, but we can barely hear each other. So if it seems we're like, mm -hmm. yeah. what, or like speaking over each other, we're not trying to be rude. <laughs> we just are having yeah. trouble hearing each other. Um, uh, that being said, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I, I applaud Wizards for, you know, creating spaces like this for the conversation, making these changes. Um, a lot of you may or may not know, I got on the map for my very public criticisms of the portrayal of Chult. Uh, I was like, why do the black people in Faerun have to be like this boring um, colonial analog? I'm like, it's a fantasy world. The black people could be from the moon. You know, why, why, what, you know, why are they cannibals? Yeah. What, what, you know? Um, and uh, to Watsi's eternal credit, specifically, uh, I want to singularly call out Greg Tito. Shout out to my homie. Yeah. He's helped a lot of us mm -hmm. get opportunities, you know, and uh, putting yeah, his yeah. money where his mouth is. You know, thank you, for Greg sure, Tito. Sure. Um, so I, I think, yeah, this game is 50 years old. And, and it was, you know, an outstretch of things Tolkien did, which was an outstretch of Finnish mythology. I mean, it goes back many, many, many mm -hmm. centuries. So I don't fault the game for having some problematic themes. But yes, we need to consciously be aware of that as we're moving forward. And I think it's a good first step. Absolutely. And I appreciate the calling out of these singular things. It's starting a bunch of really interesting conversations that uh, occur a lot. Uh, I do a lot of streaming that like in that sort of pre-game scenario where we're sitting and talking and talking about like things like safety tools and lines and veils and how deep we mm -hmm. want to get into it. Because I think this is all more indicative of like the general trend in RPGs to be more cognizant of their roots and rectify it moving forward. So I appreciate that they are looking at the drow and orcs. Tieflings are on there too. If you like playing mm -hmm. a tiefling, it is it is struggle tourism. And I don't know, I, I apologize. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of hot topic goths that are like, I just like it because I get horns in a tail and I look very scary. But the idea of tieflings as a like, persistently persecuted class like that doesn't come from nowhere and mm -hmm. if you are willing to steep yourself in it in a fantasy scenario to tell a story think about people that have to live that every day and when mm -hmm. you talked earlier omega about calls to action and what people within the community non-black geeks in the rpg community can do be cognizant yeah. of the choices that you're making if you want to play a drow play a drow but think about all the like layers of things that go into it when we talk about a lot about racism right now, it's not just the like 
lynching of black people from trees that's violent and true and the things that we're protesting but also inspect like the subtle ways in which like a a, a culture of conditioning of white supremacist patriarchy influences the way mm -hmm. you think about the like matrilinear like slavers in uh, uh, like of drow and people in the underdark think about how mm -hmm. tieflings are feared and how they lean like they either lean or don't lean into that i mean mm -hmm. it's the Candyman movie that jordan peele's coming out with about becoming the yep. monster that a society thinks you are all of this is in yep. there and I appreciate that you want to come and like talk to all of us about it, but we live in it every day. And there are people much smarter than us that have written great things about it. So inspect those ways in which the like psychosocial uh, aspects of racism are in the game. And it's not just on wizards. Yay, they're taking steps and that's super important too. But like you at mm -hmm. your table, think about it and talk about it and root out mm -hmm. some of the ways that like, they have a laundry list of things to do and they'll get through it, but like do your part at the table too. Don't let this mm -hmm. just come from the top down and then bump against it going like, well, I like my orcs evil. Like, I don't give a shit what you like. You're so sorry. <laughs> your story is your story, <laughs> but don't do it without inspecting it first. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh. it's like, and you can like your orcs evil, but you don't have to like your orcs only evil. Yes. 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 The, the, the difference between an orc having an urge to destroy everything around the corner because he's the Incredible Hulk versus the orc having an urge to destroy everything around every corner because that's his blood and that's what's inside yeah. of him and that's what he's meant right. to do because that's what he yeah. is. That's a totally different idea. Playing evil characters <laughs> is fine. It's when that evilness yep. comes from their culture and how the, the, the systemic bullcrap that is yeah. placed upon said culture. That's where yep. the problem is. Like, yeah, we're friends, I, I and, I, and I'll use, real, real quick, I'll use this real quick. We know the drow are evil because of love, quote unquote. Yeah. If it stayed with them, and that's some matriarchal, that's some, that's some misogynistic stuff going in that as well, because why the woman got to be evil? But You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> but if that was the route you were going to go, because an evil goddess or god um, decided to inflict that 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 concept upon their people, then that's a route. But when you make it because they're dark skinned and they are yeah. in in the ground and um, they yep. just naturally are bad, but all the pale white ones are really cool and they get pretty magic because they're high elves. That's a problem. Go ahead, Peter. Oh, yeah. But don't forget those sun elves. They're they're tan. They're they're sun kissed. <laughs> they're not really white. They're tan. So it's not racist. They're golden skin. I cannot. Don't forget. I, 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 I don't know. Yo, I'm just You're saying. <laughs> Your delivery was hilarious. I don't know why, but like honestly, like if you if you think about it, like so where you guys have that, I read all of like the Drist books. I love Drist to the point where my wrestling character is inspired by Drist to strive to be know. different and not follow that stereotype. So it's like it's weird to me uh, almost that I'm hearing this, and now that you guys are saying, I'm like, oh yeah. Oh man, like, and I feel like I'm just having light bulbs. Yeah. Like, what have I been doing? Because I've only associated like goblins and kobolds, yeah. like creatures that are almost they're they're slaves. I'm not gonna BS around it, but they're they're slaves yeah. or like oh they're the arch minions or the fodder. And I associated more of that as being racist than well, some of know, the other stuff you guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Drit Stewart, our homie, you know, but even then, his, the Drit stories are still the noble savage trope, you know, that yeah. is like, yo, you're the, the good, good one. one. You're the good one. You're the one good one. to Omega's point, though, here, here in, 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 he just said this, but I really want to underline this for anyone who might be confused. A villain is a villain because of what they do, not because yes. of what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So I just you say it out. You can have orcs that are adversaries, but they're adversaries because you guys are having a land skirmish, or uh, maybe because they're starving. Maybe they've got a good reason for doing what they're doing, and you can still be foes. But if your answer is 
we're wiping them out because they're orcs. They're evil because they're goblins. They're good because they're elves. Any correlation between race and morality is problematic. And I had somebody yes. say, well, well, but where does it end? You know, it was like, can, can I have a, a gold dragon that's a villain? I'm like, yeah, all it has to do yeah. is want something that you don't want. It wants to live where you live. And it's like, well, go, because obviously I'm going to make better use of it. They were like, well, what if it's a lich? You know, uh, is, it, is it okay to have an evil lich? I'm like, you could tell a story about a lich that's been a lich for a thousand years and is starting to realize maybe they're wrong. Maybe this was a mistake. You know, I mean, like, if you have a creature with free yeah. will, they can make different decisions. It shouldn't mm -hmm. just be like, oh, you've got dark skin and therefore you're bad, which is kind of what yeah. it's been for, like, you know, a couple centuries Tanya. now. Ooh. By like, <laughs> yeah, I already I saw someone wanted... in the comments. Hold on. I already saw one in the oh, comments. That's why I don't read them. That's why I don't read them. Stop it, TK. Yep. <laughs> no, no, it's, I'm gonna do it. It's too late. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm here. No, no, I'm, I'm here. Gonna, no, do TK, it, you talk. Let me talk. Yeah. Oh, no. So I'm gonna talk about yeah. this. Because I can multitask. I've got more than one monitor. I can see all the little raggedy comments in chat about, Stay oh, again. I can't be evil now. I can't do this. I can't do that. Here's the thing. When you want to overlay right. real world racism and go historical accuracy, first off, you need to burn your books because you don't know what history is. There's no elves, there's no dragons, there's no dwarves. Last I checked, people may call me magical, but I can't cast nothing. Mm. And everybody wants to be, oh, but it's fantasy. It's just a game. It's just a game until we go, hey, orcs, orcs aren't cool. Orcs as written are noble savage tropes like dave said or they're stupid and they're evil and all they can do is bash and destroy things and they're not intelligent very same things been said about black men forever mm. when mm. you look yeah. at drow who shouldn't even be cold black because they live underground there's no light why are they dark you know it, really makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense but because they were cursed the to be dark i know i know <laughs> okay but but i know i'm just Everybody mad knows. i'm sorry i know but i'm gonna cut you off man mm, i almost messed up i'm gonna cut you off <laughs> tk <laughs> um but you know everybody wants to play around with race until it's time to really be about race everybody wants to be black and use ab and all this other stuff or come to the table and go it's a fantasy. It's okay if I have slaves in my game, right? Or I can be a slave driver. Or if your character's black, then surely you're not educated. You had to have come from escaped slavery or you were poor or you can't read or what have you. You know, Brandon on Rivals talked about why he intentionally made his character a black elf. First comment him, so they're a drow? He didn't say that they were a drow. He said they were a black elf. They're dark skin because he's a dark skinned black man. Mm. So we can't even have ourselves in a fantasy without people explaining to us why we're drow, why this is wrong, or you're you're forcing politics into the table. Guess what? I don't get to turn this off when we close our books. When I close D and D Beyond, when I put away my yeah. dice, I'm black till I die. Y'all can play with race all you want at the table and think it's cute and funny and go, well, he he, I'm a drow, I'm I'm an orc, or you know whatever and go, oh, why are you mad? Why can't my character be a runaway slave? Because you don't have the yeah. range. You probably ain't never read a history book <laughs> or know what it's like in the, in the Forbidden Realms. So maybe, just maybe, the things that make it fun for me don't make it fun for you or vice mm -hmm. versa. You want to be, you want to play with slavery and all this other stuff because for you, it's intellectual exercise. For you, it's all fun and games and you get to go about your merry way. And now think about the fact that you just threw slavery at a black person at a table that was just trying to chill and have a good day and roll some dice and drink a beer. Think mm -hmm. about what you're doing and how that comes across. And I wanna say two quick things on that. One, I'm gonna get off the players for a second. We gonna get to the dungeon masters. We gonna get to the game masters <laughs> because you Let's enable go. that stuff. You are the one, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you control the story, but you are the guide to said story. So if you see a player who says, hey, I want to put this backstory into my drow or my orc and say they're horrible, you have the ability to say, eh, but can you not? And then you have the ability to educate said person on why they shouldn't go this route and lead them to another route. That's all, I mean, and, and yes, it's hard. But again, it goes to educating yourself so you're better prepared at your own tables so you can give that knowledge to the players so the entire game can be fine and dandy. Like, 
and I know that some DMs want to have their own their their own stories, their own homebrews, and all these things. Hold on, be Dave. Um, their, their own. You still can do all of those things, make it your own, without taking those concepts of real life history and plucking them into your game just because that's the only thing you know when you learned about it in middle school. You don't have to do that. <laughs> and I also want to say this to the players real quick. Because we're talking about drow and orcs and tieflings and goblins. Yeah, I don't want to see a white human with a slavery black background either. I've seen mm. it way too much. This is how I'm going to make my character the the edgy, the one who's gone through it. I don't want to see a white man talking about breaking chains at all. Unless you're ghostwriter, I don't want to see that. <laughs> at all. Ghostwriter. <laughs> Like, no, because it's not cute. Because why is it that my struggle or my people's struggle is just another storyline for you to then elevate yourself and, and, and get out of those binds and be a better person? Because guess what? My people tried that, and we're still in prison. Guess what? It's the prison system. Like, we yeah. still deal with it. So, like, it's not cute. You can go with different topics and different ways to make your character better without taking these things that have visibly harmed us since we got to this ground not on our own uh court by the way um so yeah go ahead b-day yeah it's, it's it's like being a pizza cutter it's all edge and no point you know um it, <laughs> here's the thing i it's, it, 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 one of the things I, I often say is the reason why we play these games, the reason why video games will never completely replace tabletop ever, no matter how good video games get, and I love video games, is it is a chance to be at cause in the narrative, to have the things you do or the things you don't do matter to have an impact because a lot of times you don't feel that in the world. Marginalized communities, sometimes multiply, multiple stacks of marginalization on top of them get to feel even less at cause in their lives and in their communities and like they can have a meaningful impact. That's why we all come to these games as a refuge. So don't get upset about like, oh, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. Like that's an inconvenience because believe me, living it is real rough. Just ask yourself, <laughs> Are my actions prohibiting the other person at the table from enjoying this? And that's true about everything. That's true about lines and veils. That's true about red X's. The fact that mm -hmm. having a, a, a rape trope in the story doesn't bother you, but if it bothers them, you need to not do it. So it's yes. all part of it so that everyone can come together and form a legend together and form your own mythology and your own story together. That's the point. It is a collaborative art. And there's no point in going on a journey if half the people in the boat are literally rowing in the wrong direction or even worse, literally beating the other people over the head with the oars <laughs> while they're trying to finally move it forward. Yeah. So also, I, I I'm at B Dave this. Walters. Well, I'm on Twitter. My DMs are open. If you got questions, you can ask me. If you get greasy on my wall, <laughs> I will rinse you. I'm being polite here on Twitch. I just want you to know that. But yeah, if you want to holler at me, holler at me. Okay. So, so I'll say, I'll say this. Um, you know, for me personally, it's it's about how the DM can control the game, right? And one of my favorite games that I played with uh, is with Kaylee Bray. And the very first meeting that we had, it's a brand new, yeah, shout out to Kaylee. I love you, girl. Um, so good. You know, uh, yeah, but part of like us playing together for the first time is us sending, she sent us a questionnaire saying, hey, what are we comfortable with? And it went outside like race and gender and it was a whole gore, violence, everything on this board so she could build the perfect story so everyone could interact. And I think that's what a lot of DMs are missing other than just assuming that, eh, this person's chill, this person's laid back, they don't care, you know, like one of the things on there was cussing. Hey, is everyone cool with cussing? Is that a thing? Which I try to keep it super for PG, PG 13 ish. Sometimes it slips, but you know, we're all adults. Um, but that was something that was really cool. And I think that's something that more DM should implement, especially playing with not your core group of friends. Like I have my core group of friends. We play every week, uh, you know, when we're not mad at each other for TPKs and stuff. But like, <laughs> dude, you don't even, I can, mm -mm, we ain't going there. But like, <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, I'm so bitter about the last one. But still, you know, just having that sensitivity and just saying, hey, I, I don't know a thousand percent about you personally. I don't know you. Like, maybe you have a deep, dark secret that you don't feel comfortable discussing. Like, I think these are things that are key to building a better game for a more uh, more enjoyable atmosphere. Because for me personally, d and is the only way that I really get to escape the BS that's happening in the world, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, D&D is that thing where I just want to problem solve and enjoy my time enjoy that good beverage that necessarily isn't a beer probably something a little bit harder um and yeah just have a good time and enjoy great company but when those issues sneak in like tanya was saying it's hard to sit there and just be like uh like uh, all right well dang all right now i gotta deal with this too in game because someone thought that that comment was cool and you know you try to smile through it because yep. sometimes you feel like that's your only option and then like hopefully you can talk about it later and call that friend or whoever did it and be like hey you know this was not okay i just want to let you know but sometimes you don't want to ruin the atmosphere and sometimes you feel like when these things happen your voice is just compressed more and more and more and like i mm-hmm. get that i understand that and you know i feel like at first to change the world you have to start at home right Where, yeah. wherever that home is for you like my my home we had a nice group discussion with the family with the crew and just said hey these things aren't acceptable like i know you guys have never done this and i feel this like way more than i thought that i would like it's crazy uh that i have just such a major emotional attachment to a situation in the world that is miles and miles and miles away but it does and I get emotional. I get to the point where I want to shut down and I don't want to talk to people because like someone was saying earlier, um, the Twitter stuff, why do, why do we have to say what side we take? That, that was something that baffled me that like people would come onto my Twitch. People would come onto my Instagram and be like, well, why aren't you saying something? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? I'm African American. Last I check, I came out the womb black. My, you know, everything. Why do I have to say what side I'm on? Look at mm-hmm. me. Yep. Look at me. Look at me. Why do I have to say, "Hey guys, Black Lives Matters"? I, it's it, it should be implied. Why do I have to educate you on my <laughs> state? My it voice. should be implied. Because, that's that's because it right there. <laughs> because, yeah, because Candace because Owens and, okay. and, and Diamond and Silk messed it up yeah, for us. That's but the one. Like, <laughs> but look. But look, let's let's have that one moment. This is normally not the things that people get to see outside the kitchen table. But for some people, it's not apparent. Not all skin folk is skin folk. There's been a lot mm-hmm. of people where I had to like put them to the side and on the shelf and be like, I can't talk to you. I can't trust you. Because you're like, oh, well, you're giving the mm-hmm. same ridiculous BS that other folks. Are. Well, you know, if you just wait, if you if you were just nicer yep. and we won't get allies. And y'all have seen me be mad about the word ally online. Yep. <laughs> don't be an ally be an accomplice because every time somebody has run up on me but i'm an ally you're gonna lose me as an ally why aren't you nicer to me why won't you explain it as we've said google is free my time is not and every time somebody's run up on me and talking about they're an ally they have been the absolute worst kind of person i've ever encountered and if you'll mm-hmm. indulge me last year packs unplugged this white woman right festooned in ally ribbons and t-shirts i don't even know where she got all of this from at the convention <laughs> was like she started to talk to me like i a i didn't know what i was doing because we were tabling for my for my group the group that i started out of literally a hashtag in the air and talking about well you know if you did this and if you talk to colleges and you could get all these students and don't you know that if you went to companies and i'm looking at her like lady there's four of us five that, and that includes the board and me who does most of the traveling, but also we don't make games. I, where do you think all of this time and energy is coming from? We do good to stay afloat month to month most times. The only reason we're okay right now is because there's nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. We're doing this from home. Yep. And you get to mm-hmm. see how my, my, my thing living is, room is looks what? like something exploded. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Like Sorry. another thing that I have an issue with is like, don't just say something. Don't just say, Hey, I'm an ally or say, Hey, BLM. I put the, I blacked out my Tuesday. So I'm in support. Mm. Do something, <laughs> do something, go out Look. there and do something. Be proactive. Mm. 
Go educate yourself. Hey, if you want to say BLM and then sit on your couch and watch TV, go out and be a part of a protest. If you're serious about being a voice in this movement, a voice for change, a voice for the future, do it. Don't just use yep. social media as a cop out to, yep. to mm -hmm. just say, well, I said it all in there. That's I am a firm believer of that. Like, I don't I don't say this a lot. And mind you guys, I live in my little hole here, but I've been out to the protest. I can't run. So I'm in the back, but I've been out to the protest. You don't see me posting on social media about what I'm doing. Hey, I've donated to multiple charities off the record, but you don't see me going, hey, guys, I donated to this fund and this fund. Uh, no, uh, uh, go out there, see, use I, your voice for something positive. <clears throat> you, use your voice even lie. to mean something. It, these are things that irritate me and they've been irritating me for a while, but I sit at home yeah, get it and this is why I told you guys uh, earlier, I, I had to turn off all the social media. I'll go and I'll like and yeah. retweet, but I can't, I cannot do it because it frustrates me so much that people mm -hmm. that I have worked with in the past that I will work with in the future can sit here and say these things behind, behind the curtain of social media. And then go on social media and post hashtag I stand with you. Hashtag mm. I love mm. I love black. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Mm. Hashtag All Lives Matter. Hashtag Pride Month. Hashtag whatever the the social media trend of the freaking week is. But you can't mm -hmm. go out there and stand outside and use your voice, use your person as someone that can stand for something. Mm -hmm. Send me a photo of the news article that caught you in the crowd. Send send me a photo. Hell, hell, I will open up my DMC all for one day only, and then I'll probably turn it off after 30 minutes because we all know how that gets. <laughs> but like period. Mm -hmm. Show me that you mean and by, what you say. And I wanna I wanna I wanna go a little Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I go just ahead. want to add on to TK. You know, I know you got something bubbling over there. I see it on your face. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're right. I know. I see it. <laughs> I'm just thinking about yeah. all the. I'm just. I'm just thinking about all the people that I've seen on Twitter with BLM and their hashtags that I know I ain't never mm. seen in a rival show. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about all those mm. people with BLM and their Keep Twitter. I ain't never Robbins. seen you watching said that. plot hunters. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about mm. all those people I've seen BLM on Twitter being like, support black writers, support black creators, support black books, support black games. And I know I ain't never seen none of y'all, none of y'all on those podcasts, none of y'all sharing that stuff. Hey, and let's, let's do an allies. Yeah, go oh, back oh, into oh, this. Oh. Like, oh, go ahead. No, Sorry. I was gonna say, go ahead. Let's also let's also talk about the same ones that are always in something on Twitter that are the first people to jump in your mentions when you mm -hmm. as black as a black person is talking about this is racist, this bothers me, this happened, or you know, when like on rivals we've had racists come in the chat on occasion. We've handled it, but after the show, because I got a big mouth, I'm not gonna sit here and just be quiet. People go, yep. Well, why are you mad about it? Blah, blah, blah. But they'll be the first one arguing with other racists, but you didn't you didn't retweet or go live from DD. You didn't retweet mm -hmm. any of us. You mm -hmm. always in our DM from our oh well, well, you know, I, I'm trying to support you. Support me by shutting up. By shutting up and listening yeah. and actually doing what we need you to do instead of always running your mouth being loud and wrong twenty four seven. For clap yep. and, and for cookies. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not and, about and, your and voice, my... it's about your presence. That's the thing. Yep. Yes. Like, show up at a exactly. protest. Show up. Like, I don't need you to tell me on Twitter so I can give you a gold star for being a good ally. Show up in Rivals of Waterdeep. Be there. Be a fan or a stan if you're still using that language. Like, we need you to be there yep. in all all versions of the word and not just be like, well, I would have posted two black two black boxes if I had like I don't need that get out level like well intentioned yeah. troll. Oh my god like, to say that oh, get out level. And like and like my and not yeah. do the and, things that like prove that you are a part of the cause and not just happy to be swept up in the emotion of of what's going on right now. 
Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know yeah. I always see those those big old tweet threads getting like three thousand people being like, I don't follow enough black creators. I don't follow enough oh, black people in TTRPGs, oh, oh. and I'm gonna get like mm, I don't know fifty follows out of that, and that's nice. Thank you, thank you for following me. Please show up to my streams. Please buy my books. Yep. This is what I gotta eat. I can't eat clout. Oh, this is what I gotta say to all of that. She said, I can't eat clout. She said, me, I need you. some clout to crunch <laughs> with some milk in the morning. Um, yeah. No, this is what I have to say about that. I am an equitable actor. I have been a vocalist since I was a child. My blood is performance. And half of y'all are better performers than I am. Because I literally said the other day, I'm ready for a month to go by, a week to go by, and those hashtag Black Lives Matters uh, usernames are deleted. We're not gonna see none of that in your Twitter bios. We're not gonna see the fist that you put up for your uh, profile picture. We're not gonna see none of that because you don't mm -hmm. actually care about the cause. You just wanna be seen as someone who cares about the cause so you can get some points so people can start following you or being whatever. Like Tanya said, there's a select few who always got to pop up when a black person says something is wrong. Always. And you don't ever see them share nothing other than them trying to get some clout from something. Like, I I'm done with it. I'm completely over it. I, 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 don't, I don't... What is it going to take for you to get to your thick skulls that actions speak a hell of a lot more louder than words and i want to say not everybody can go out to a protest we know that because of COVID 19 a lot a lot of people are immune you know compromised we know that's a problem but show up show up in these in these channels show mm -hmm. up in these games donate if you have the yeah. money and please please i don't care about the receipt of you doing it just do it i was so yep. done when the minnesota support fund happened and every other posts was hey i donated i'm happy for you yeah. i thank thank you yeah. for doing it but i'm happy for you but what's the point what are you doing mm -hmm. after that or did you just want yeah. your little badge of honor saying that you donated now don't, don't get me wrong there are some people with some check marks who did it and it really raised awareness and allowed more people to donate i'm i'm happy for that but if you're just doing it for the clout for to be a part of the group then i don't care I need to see what you're doing now, tomorrow, next week, next month, next yep. year. I need to see that continue, or I don't care. It's Period. like our friend Mika Burton says, fight with the weapons you're proficient with, you know? Uh, and I can tell you, exactly. I got a couple canaries in the coal mine whose I see it in the buy. Yeah. I'm just checking to see when it drops off. Mm -hmm. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, yep. mm -hmm. Just keeping an eye. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, I'm just, it's, it's hard. It's hard to sit here and scroll through social media and see the double standard to see just people doing it for the likes, for the fan. Okay. Or, or, or we like in social gatherings and I know y'all have probably been victim of this as well. Like the quarantine ones anyway, like they, they talk about their black friend. Oh, uh, and I, oh. I just can't, mm. I just can't. And, and like they're just, and I feel like a lot of it is nervous energy, just just they don't know how to react. Hey, I'm I'm I love y'all. Y'all know y'all are some of my biggest fans, my biggest supporters. But please, 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 do not tell me about your black friend who who's the nicest person in the world. Like I, I don't want to hear it. It's fine if you're friends with me. If you're my fans, I get it. I get it. You do not have to explain it. I don't want to hear it. Like, but a lot of the microaggressions that we hear as African American people that have a platform is not okay. Like, for example, yeah. like, and I feel like this just needs to be said across the board because this is happening for years, but finally now us saying it. Uh, but Dave posted this yesterday, and I've never been so happy to see this. And mind you, my quick little 30 second check do not talk about the way that I talk. All right. Yep. Oh, uh, <sighs> do not talk about the way that I look. Do not mm -hmm. talk about the way that I listen to music, what TV shows I like. Because as soon as you say she ain't black, I'm looking in the mirror like, damn, am I colorblind? Did, did I miss something? <laughs> right? Just, just because I have outside interests 
that in involves video mm. games, comic books, Dungeons and Dragons. Hell, look at the room behind me. It's all nothing but nerd stuff does not mean that I am not African American. Yep. It does not mean that my voice does not matter. Just because I have a college education that I went to school and I worked hard and I became successful does not mean that I am not African American. Because at the same time, when you guys say that, I see a young man that was found hanging from a tree and I had to turn off my phone. I had to turn off my internet because I was so shattered and I was so broken and I was so afraid for my safety, my husband's safety, my parents' safety, my brother's safety. Even my family that lives in Minnesota currently dealing with the riots. Yep. I have to think about all of them and live in that fear every single take for you to tell me that I'm not black. And that's not okay. That is not okay. Yeah. It never has Let been okay me. and it never never will be. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna get off my soapbox again and say oh no in the corner. No, you're good. No, I, just I mean, but like, uh, done just, Can I jump in? Dave, uh, you talk real, a lot. Just, I, oh, go ahead. <laughs> No, I want to say sorry. One quick thing. Yeah. I want to no, say we, one quick our, our, thing. Our sound I promise you. Glitch, glitch, our sound is glitching out on us. I apologize. I just wanted to give you all a little bit of context for to, to add to what uh, Ember's saying, the plus one, all that. All these people that are being found hung is where I live. This within the 50-mile radius is where I am. I live near Victorville and Palmdale. Omega was there in Ferguson. Again, this is our lives. We're not talking about this theoretically. Like, this is our actual yes. existence right now. Mm -hmm. exactly. And I just want to quickly and say, I, wanted to I want to comment on something. Just really quick. This is not, the, I'm not going to continue. Yep. I just want to comment on something real quick because I saw it in the chat. Someone said, oh, this is so far from D&D. &D. No, my guy or my friend, whatever, I don't yes. want to gender you. But we are black people playing this game. Yep. <laughs> Everything we are saying applies to the game because we yes. have to experience this on a daily basis. Mm. My voice mm -hmm. is getting loud because you're not getting it through your, your thick skulls. <laughs> We're ranting about being lynched. We're ranting about all these things. It still applies to the game because we have to struggle every single time we roll the dice because there is something in this game that is culturally wrong. There's slavery. There's all these different aspects. We can't get away from it. So we want to, yes. but we can't. So when you say, oh, yeah. right now, you're not talking about D&D. Yes, we are. Because guess what? D&D mm -hmm. is just a version of our lives that we do, but we add dice to it. We want to be special. Yep. We want to have fun. But it is still us. We are still the players. Mm -hmm. We are still the people who could control these characters. Do not tell me that this is not D&D. Because it is. I'm going to get off mm -hmm. my soapbox now. Continue. <laughs> Let me go ahead and pop is, up then. If you want this tied together, let me put it another way and tie in both with what both Ember Moon and Omega have just said, responding to the person in chat that says that this isn't D&D. &D. Let's talk about going back to where we have called out tieflings, orcs, and drow, and the problem of ethnic determinism, and how that leads to stereotypes that not only persist and corrupt the game, but go into the player and become part of how they understand the world. When you talk about Ember speaking so eloquently or not being Black for our, our hobbies, you are making exceptions. That individual exceptionalism, that thing that is drist in the in the novels too, that comes from a basis of going, well, I understand how Black people are, and that's how this one is different. And that's racist. And it's not just a thing that we experience in games with Drist or Jarlaxle being different than the other drow. Because we exist in these spaces too, and we get called to our face constantly different than other black people, not like them. And that hurts on in two fronts, because one, you are denying my identity, and two, you are mm -hmm. casting a disparagement on my people. And that's a thing that exists in this community, and I'm telling you, if you don't see how like orcs are racist, I bet you have microaggressed against your one black friend and said something mm -hmm. like this. And you don't understand how the, the media you consume, the fiction that you live in and work in and exist in, even on a game basis, influences the way you see the world. And mm -hmm. that comes back to us not only when we sit at a table with you and roll dice, but how we walk through the world when you want to like police our tone and say that we're too angry because that's how you think of black people. It's how you are able to 
uh, sit with your white families as they talk about all lives mattering or trying to paint the victims of unnecessary police brutality with the brush of, well, they were a criminal and probably deserved it. Even a criminal doesn't deserve to be shot on the street. Dylan Roof mm -hmm. opened fire on a, on a black church and got taken to Burger King. Wasn't harmed a bit. They fed him. So when and we talk about us. how, yeah, exactly. So when we talk about how these things ripple out into society as a whole, it may seem like we're talking about drowned orcs, but we are talking about the very sense of how white people cast our existence in this world. So it mm -hmm. all matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's then that's my point. If you want me to tie this into D&D, we are all content creators on some form or fashion. That's it. I am a public figure that speaks on camera in front of millions of people. Think about that. So you telling me how I'm supposed to sound, how I'm supposed to look, that is an insult to the highest degree. When I play D&D &D, and I don't pop on a voice because one, I'm just kind of incapable of that right now. I'm learning. But <laughs> when, I, when I do stuff like that and you guys, oh, well, she's not supposed to sound like that. <clears throat> That's an insult and that is a microaggression. Oh, she sounds educated. That is a microaggression. Do you not understand what we are saying? All we're saying is, is that, hey, this is, this is not meant for us to just rant. This is for your education. This is for us as content creators, as people prevalent in the D&D world, the gaming world, and sportsmen across the board, that this is not okay. And if you're tuning in, this is to educate you. You guys want to sit here and text us and email us. Is this okay? Is that okay? We're telling you what's okay. And we're telling you guys what makes us angry. And we're telling you guys how maybe us expressing these things could make you a better person in the future when it comes to your gaming, when it comes to you interacting on chat with people. That's all we're saying. So at the fact where you're saying that, oh, this isn't about this or this isn't about that, you are being insensitive to the situation and you're proving to not only us, but everyone in the African American community that you are unwilling to see past your biases, past those things, past those stereotypes to understand what we are saying. Because knowledge is power and we are providing all the knowledge right now from our point of view. Right? You cannot have a debate without yeah. understanding both sides of the fence. And if you're still on this side of the fence saying, well, I support you or whatever like that. Sorry, my Texas accent came out for a second, <laughs> y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> like, Don't you know, apologize. Like, it, we're, we're understanding this and this and this. But when we tell you something and you're still like, no, nah, I'm going to stay over here. You're not learning. You're not changing. In two, three weeks from now, when this becomes more and more off social media, are you really going to care or are you going to go make another microaggression to your black coworker or your black friend in a D&D game or a board game or hell, just a Zoom chat? I'm trying not to drop the words right now. I'm trying very hard, you know, <laughs> like that, I don't you worry, know, you I'll, might I'll... say something that might anger someone. And that's all we're saying is that this is for education. All right. So well, I'm, I'm going to step on back to come back to come back to it is that. You know, me and Dave, I don't I don't know about the rest of us, but we grew up probably with satanic panic. But also, I'm sure we've all had that experience of going in a game store or showing up somewhere with our books before everything was digital and going, people looking at us like, what are you doing here? You know, our friend Christina had the experience of somebody talking to her like, oh, this is D&D, &D. don't be afraid, we're just nerds. And it's like, I'm older than D&D &D, though. I got dice that are probably <laughs> older than you. Mm. And this idea that blackness and being a nerd and a geek and D and D and video games doesn't all go together. When there, I got a console is probably older than some people like to tell me this online. And that's not being like, oh, you think you're better than me because you're older. It's literally I've had people that could be my kid talking to me like clearly I've never heard of a PlayStation or Dice or D and D or anything else. And it's this idea, and I grew up with it, I'm sure Dave and, and, and others here grew up with it, that that's not a thing we do. That's not something we do. So when you find black people at conventions, on shows, TK is Tales from the Mist, I'm on Rivals, Dave does vampire everything. 
Omega and I are gonna <laughs> Omega Dave and I are gonna be on a vampire charity game. You know, Ember, you play. We all do stuff, you know, Quiddy, you you have a dice company, which people don't seem to know. Which I didn't know <laughs> until today. I'm like, here, take all my money. You can about to get more orders. Um mm -hmm. They act like we've never been here or we just sprung out of the earth full grown because, you know, D&D is suddenly on the internet, suddenly on Twitch, and now we somehow found it. Here's a spoiler. We've been making these games. TK said it um, when we were, we were kind of back chatting. We make games. All of us have our names on something, whether it's a contributor, yep. whether we made it, wrote it from scratch. But people want to act like we're not here and that merely the presence of black people at the table politicizes it. Spoiler, the world did this. We're not walking around angry with a chip on our shoulder just because. I would love to be able to walk in the game store, throw my books down, and just have a good time without somebody acting like, oh, well, you must not know how to play in D&D. &D. You've never seen the rule book because you're a black chick. Or, you know, presenting female because you got certain things on your chest that clearly you've never touched dice. These are foreign <laughs> objects to you. So mm -hmm. we need to get past the you're black, therefore you cannot be a nerd. Because being a nerd has never been more mainstream. I could walk into Target, COVID notwithstanding, and pick up an essentials kit. So yep. when in our lives you've been able to just walk in any store, not a game store, not a specialized store, pick up game books and just go about your merry way. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's wild, yeah, to, to your point. Uh, you know, where I come from, I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, and this was all very much referred to as white people stuff. Like, that's what yep. my life was. You know, like, <laughs> why are you playing those games or reading comic books or watching Star Trek? I was just lucky that, you know, my, my mom was a geek from the old school, so this has always been my life. It's the only life I've ever known. But I just wanted to say one side note here. Um, Yes, we're expressing our frustration uh, out of, quite frankly, the pain of our existence on an existential level. But it, what we don't want you to take from this is not necessarily um, that you should just go somewhere and feel bad. It's fine that you just might not have noticed. I have shared multiple mm -hmm. times now that uh, I myself was on the wrong side of me, too. I didn't understand the depth of the problem. I was aware that many of my female friends had been harassed or like dudes had been like cruel to them. But as the stories were coming out and I started finding out how basically every single woman I knew had horror stories, I didn't know that. Therefore, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I need to adjust my behavior. I need to adjust my perception. I need to be on the lookout for things I wasn't looking for. Okay, and then be different. That's what we're yep. pointing out to you now. That we're like, did you realize there's a whole bunch of things that are wrong right over there? And you're like, oh, word? <laughs> oh, word? And be mindful oh, of that. Uh, I will say, uh, Abria, uh, shout out to your, your dice company, though, because you, you got a big captive audience right now. So, I mean, like, like lay it on them. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey, guys, I'm the CMO and occasional CEO of Dice Envy. Uh, we make dope dice. If you've heard of us, uh, heard of us recently, well, I'm just going to I'm going to toot my own horn, horn really quick. This dice company precedes me. But if you've heard about it now, because of some of the like cool names, we have a set that looks like Captain America. It's called America's Ass. If you like those names, it's because I'm the one that names those dice. And when we talk about like reaching out, the, the, lev the level of talent that exists in these communities and despite us being overlooked constantly, like you don't have to come and hire a black person so you can tell a black story. These dice are not black by nature. They're good as hell. And that's just because they opened up the world to like the creative talent of your girl and other people. So like, yeah, go check out Dice Envy. We have a bunch of really cool dice, but yeah, stay out there and stay in the streets and like keep reaching out to black people. Like we are here, we have stories. They are more than like the put upon like slave or disgruntled like I don't know. I keep making movie references, but we we have range, <laughs> so keep reaching out. It's not just about like long sufferingness and being a noble savage. There's so much more to it than that. And yeah, just don't don't quit this energy because we're we are all worried and terrified that the opportunities yes. being presented to us now will not exist in a month. Mm hmm. Exactly. For sure. Like um. I, I know I, like, as soon as I heard about this, I jumped on. 
that was that was it like i was there like you stopped me from basically as soon as i heard about it and the opportunity opportunity presented itself because i think as content creators is is successful african-american people that we have to use our platform to at least just show every that we're just like everyone else, that we are just as bothered whether I'm standing outside right now or sitting in my home, right? And that and that's the purpose, like knowledge is power. But it, if you take anything away from this and you take anything away from me, know that change, true change for a better future starts in the home. Because if you go out and you protest and you still come home and do the same things, you're not changing. You're just putting a mask on what's already there. Yep. I agree. Um, I'm actually going to take the time now because um, I know that whenever we say last words, those last words can be a whole Iliad. <laughs> so we are wrapping up. We are getting Not to the end here. of our... <laughs> we are getting to the end of our show. Um, so I want to go around to each of these creators and first of all, thank them. Thank them so much for their time and effort. Um, for being here because these words have been very, very powerful and we've all needed to hear this. Um, so I'm going to start with Tanya and go down the list as I see on the screen to just give some final thoughts uh, about how you feel, what you want known, promote yourself. What, As I said again, F you pay us because we're tired and we're giving you this education. Um, but it's not about the money, but it's just the fact that we are here doing something for you. So starting with Tanya, how do you feel? What, what do you want the world to know as you leave this space? <laughs> what I really like is for people to actually listen instead of getting defensive, because since I multitask, I could see all the raggedy comments in chat flying by. The problem is people will not listen. I said this at the end of the last round table. A lot of people are mad. They're going to get knee jerk and go, I'm not a racist. I put my black square up on Tuesday. I vote for Obama again. I, I don't do that. That's not how I run my table. Cool. Except I don't know who you are. I may never sit at a table with you. That's nice. Go forth and put that energy in the world instead of being mad and asking for yet more emotional labor. We've been here an hour and a half, however much time we got, asking yet more questions that are super specific. Google is free. Google Scholar is even free. Go find that. Go look up the terms we've talked about. Look up Juneteenth. Look up anti-racism. Follow black people on Twitter. But listen, don't be in our DMs talking about, well, I'm sorry I'm white, and I'm sorry for other white people, and I never played a drow or what have you, and I'll never do it again, and, and I thought about playing an orc, and now I won't do it. That is not helpful at all. What I need people to do is listen. I realize especially... When we say things like Black Lives Matter, we are not saying only Black Lives Matter or Black Lives Matter more. We need you to listen. Active listening is a skill you should have learned in school. And what I've realized, 95% of the people I interact with online don't know what that means. They cannot simply listen without getting defensive and getting angry. I did not personally mm -hmm. come into your living room right now and call you a terrible racist and said you should jump off up here. All I'm doing is asking you to listen. <laughs> Look, people act like I showed up and slapped their mama, stole the last bit of food and all the money out the bank account when I say when I say please listen. Um, and, you know, that's all I'm asking. And, and you know, and everybody here, we've talked about this. This is not the first time we've had this conversation. We talk about this all the time on Twitter, but Twitter does not have nuance. So use the Craig Ferguson rules of should I engage when you see a tweet and you don't understand, go do some work. And if you still don't get it ask, should I ask this? Should I be the one to say this? And do I need to say it right now? But a lot of times don't think about reading the room or time, place, presence. And if you tweeted me at two in the morning, I like sleep. You ain't never gonna get an answer. So just don't even bother. Um, but you can also find me at Cypher Tier. I know that my Twitter handle is somewhere next to my name. That is me online everywhere. Sunday, after I sleep this off, we will be back on Marvel's Water on the channel, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. Our seventh season starts. And I'm very proud to say we're the only all people of color cast on this channel. That's our official wizard show. We were an all black cast, but then we brought Masoon on. Masoon, but not a brother. Um, and, you know, one day maybe we'll be back in the studio if COVID, you know, pending. 
and then you know just i do stuff on the internet come find me be nice or i'll just add you to the six digit block list i already got going and then uh oh 26 <laughs> i'm playing vampire with b dave uh omega and a few other fine folks <clears throat> all right b dave any last words uh, again, all this weekend, I am playing Trovis, the Dragonborn. Um, yes. Again, apologies if you've seen me with my phone in my hand. It is a real-time event that has been going on, so I've been participating in D&D Live on multiple <laughs> stages right now. Uh, again, I'm the writer and co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons and Dark and & Wish. The trade paperback is available now from IDW Publishing and anywhere fine comic books are sold. I can verify it's dope, so you should read it. Uh, I am the DM of the Dungeons and & Dragons and Dark and & Wish stream. Uh, episode 1 of Season 2 premieres this coming Thursday at 5 p.m. on this very Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash D&D. Um, if you're looking to play D&D or uh, Vampire the Masquerade, because again, I have some clout in that community, uh, I have a Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Walters. Um, and yes, I had the privilege of doing a one-on-one -on -one game with both Tanya and uh, Ember and a bunch of other the dope friends uh, which is on the q times youtube um b dave walters everywhere dms are open holler at me uh but that being said the number one thing that i would like to ask and we've all said and i continue to um repeat is thank you for watching this especially if you watched and listened the the whole entire time i realize you might be seeing a face of us that you don't usually see because we're usually so pleasant understand this is our <laughs> lives all the time uh, don't get exhausted, take a break, take a knee, sit on the bench if you have to, but remember to get back in the game and especially get back in the game in November. They are going to cheat. Do not be rocked to sleep, remain vigilant. And uh, as I said at the beginning, Black Lives Matter. Yes, TK, any last words? It's me, it's TK. Uh, yeah, um, if you've been feeling uncomfortable by this, uh, honestly, don't post about it on Twitter. Because <laughs> just uh, try to avoid the the urge to center yourself and your feelings in these in these discussions. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Through discomfort comes growth. It doesn't feel great when a snake sheds its skin. You know this, that, and the other thing. Also, I don't have a coffee. I don't have a Patreon or anything like that. Um, so if you want to, uh, if you felt educated today and you were thinking you wanted to send some money towards me or something, send it towards my panelists or fellow panelists rather, or send it towards Red Nose Day or uh, the Bail Project. That's it. Uh, Quiddy, Abria. Hey, uh, yeah, I'll do my little shout out first. Uh, you can catch me on social media at Quiddy everywhere, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E, and I stream all over the place, including later today, I'll be over on 12 Sided Stories Twitch channel, uh, spinning up a new game of Hack the Planet called Heliotrope. And then tonight at 12 p.m. PS, uh, PDT, I'll be uh, playing on Scratticus Academy 24 hour stream of Games for Love. So come in for like a very weird beholder rave that I'll be throwing in the, in the wee wee hours. Uh, I love streaming. I want to leave you guys with a, like a, a more actionable item because everyone else has said it a hundred times about listening and processing and being different and being better. But as we all talk about like the things that we can do differently, think about the thing that you can do as a player or a, or a writer in the DM skilled. How how has your perspective changed in the last couple of weeks based on what you've heard and what you see and what you've learned and use that? It's about, like we use the phrase decolonization a lot, but like how do you decolonize your games? How do you decolonize your own thought patterns that allow you to make villains that make more sense because they're not just all orcs are bad? That's, that's boring, that's first level stuff. But if the, if the things that you love in like the Marvel universe are like, Killmonger or Vulture from the Spider-Man movie. Those were villains that had a, had a sense of purpose beyond just existing as a foil for the main character. So go beyond those initial waves of just orcs are bad, so I'll throw those at my players. Like dig deep and tell a more meaningful story because that serves to not only bring in your table, it improves your ability to like be a person in, this, in the world because not only are your games more thoughtful, but you as a person are more thoughtful. And if you're getting burnt out or running out of cash, do research. 
there's so many good books out there. There's links everywhere dropping education on how the Black Lives Matter movement has grown, how the Black Civil Rights Movement in America has existed, and what what has been done, what is happening, and what's left to do. So my call to action for you is learn more. Uh, Ember Moon, best words. Cool. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just freezing a little bit, so I hope you guys can still hear me and everything. Um, but like I said before, if I can leave you guys with anything, it starts in the home. It, it really does. Have these discussions with your families, with your kids, with your friends. Hell, we all have a Zoom. Like, you guys can get 40 minutes free. So, like, you know, I'm very thrifty when it comes to that stuff. But still, like, have these hard conversations and don't be afraid of them. Um, if you guys want to educate yourselves, like, I'm a firm believer in education myself. I love history. Um, we actually have a fellow roster member, Bianca Belair, who is the truth, and she is absolutely amazing. And her husband, Montez Ford, um, they started a website called culturalconnection.org um, to educate people that are uncomfortable with talking about these situations. Um, so go and check that out. Take a look. But also, don't be afraid to have someone that you can talk to about this, because that really helped me out with a lot of my feelings, being able to talk to the women at my job, being able to connect on such an intimate level other than just being coworkers and talking about real issues. That is so important. Um, knowledge is power, and knowledge is key to improving our future. So if you're uncomfortable, good. I want you to be. If, if you're defensive, maybe instead of being defensive, maybe explore why you're defensive. And maybe these tools that we're offering you can help with that. But other than that, I'm going to hop off my soapbox again. But you can follow me on Twitter at WWE Ember Moon, on Instagram, WWE Ember, sorry, WWE underscore Ember Moon, and on Twitch at Half Dragon EM. Um, Guys, as well, you can follow me on WWE Backstage, which is on FS1. Uh, you can find me on WWE.com. But most of all, use your voice. Use your presence to elevate this movement because this is something that isn't going to go away. And I know all of us can agree that we're not going to let it. Yep. Let me just um, insert one yeah, thing I, I haven't said. Uh, I've been making videos about this for about the last month. So you can, uh, it's called Dear America from a Black Guy. You can find him on Twitter. You yeah. can find him on YouTube. I've been explaining a lot of this stuff too. That's it. Sorry. Go on. Take us out. You're good. Omega Jones. And, and I'm Omega Jones, I'm also known as the Critical Bard, the Critical Bard across all social media channels except Twitch because Twitch doesn't like me. So Critical Bard <laughs> underscore. You can follow me all those places. Again, I'm a performer, I'm a vocalist, I've worked with Critical Role, I've released stuff on DMs Guild, but I am someone who is present. I am a black man in this community, and I just want to be a light in this chaotic world. My power is my voice. I just released a uh, subclass based in Barbarians, where literally their voice is a weapon. They use it. That's my motto in life. My voice is a weapon. So I'm going to continue using it for black people and for everyone who needs a little extra boosting. Um, Thank you all so, 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 so much for being here. It means a lot for you to just sit back and listen and take in everything that we are saying. That's all we want. We just want you to be present, understand the things that we go through, and, and, and apply that as you go forward and you watch these black people thrive. That's all we want. Just, just be there for us um, and help us continue. Um, don't go anywhere. We got a lot of more. We got a lot of more. We got a lot more stuff happening with D and D Live. There's going to be a game after this, um, so we're going to take it on to break. Love you again. I say something all the time in my channel, which is keep making trouble. We're troublemakers. We are the ones who are going to continue <laughs> to tell those stories and actively get people to listen. So keep making trouble wherever you are. Love you. Bye.